888 Shay 45 Friday night. Streets is watching. Mr. Thanksgiving DJ Drama. Shout out to Don Cannon, DJ Iceberg doing a motherfucking thing. The gang's all here. Manny Supreme, Sarah V. Vaughn. As promised, I told y'all it's a new year. It's a new hustle. It's a new energy. It's new vibrations. With that being said, we only talking superhero shit. It's 2023. We all know it's the Jordan year. And I got somebody that's in contentions to be one of the goats, one of the Jordans of the genre of his generation of hip hop. Um, what's there to say about this guy that hasn't been said? Um, one of the most impactful producers of our time uh, sold 185,000 records in his first week last year, went number one, uh, one of the most, hottest albums to come out in 2022 going in to 23 he has worked with all of your favorite artists not just rappers but all of your favorite artists and he's just a great human being man what more is there to say metro booming is here what's up man john what's up family how everybody doing i appreciate y'all how you feeling happy new year happy new year bro i'm blessed i can't complain i'm just feeling blessed and highly favored brother any any new year's resolutions um I say I wanted to start consistently going to sleep early. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. How does how does so so what does that mean? Does that mean you have to change your your uh, work s- schedule? Yeah, yeah. I like to now. I like to try to if I go to the studio. I like to like a nine to five. Just try to go mm-hmm. earlier in the day mm-hmm. so I could like leave way earlier in the evening type mm-hmm. thing. You know, Pharrell gets there at like five a.m. You know, you know what I'm saying? People like that do that. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves it like two. Yeah, bro. I, I couldn't do that. Exactly. See, yeah, they do like two. Like, I didn't mean to studio with him, and like, yeah, yeah, they'll leave at like two, but yeah. I'm just trying to have it to a good point where I could leave around nine or something. So does that mean when you're working with artists, especially, let's, let's say, A-listers, do you tell them, hey, these are my times, so this is when I need you to come, or will you work around them? It depends on the vibe. Someday, you know, sometimes stuff just happens sporadically, so you might just be in at night on the humbug, but, like, we trying to set something and you want to lock in, and, I mean, yeah, if you really want to do it, then you'll just come in the daytime. Mm-hmm. Heroes and Villains, um, the second installment of the Heroes trilogy dropped last year. Number one album in the country um, on its way to gold already. Is it gold already? Is it, It's on its way to gold. Yeah, I, I believe it's about to be. It's about to be gold. So congratulations. It's about to be gold. Thank you. I appreciate that. H- how does it feel, man? I know you have been working on this project for quite some time. Um, definitely the best rollout. I wasn't going to say of the year, but I, I would really want to say that we've seen in a long time. Uh, wow. Incredible. I appreciate that, bro. Incredible. That means a lot. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so tell us, like, how, did, how you know, how does it feel? Man, Um, I feel blessed, bro. You know, just overwhelmed with. My biggest thing, you know, besides, like, numbers and, like, all that kind of shit is always I be one people to receive the music well and, and receive it as intended and enjoy with it, enjoy it and live with it. So just to see that and just, like, the kind of joy that the music brings people, like, that's just price. That's mm-hmm. everything to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't expect it to even the whole 185 first week and all that. Like, I didn't – that – I didn't – See none of that coming. I can't even say a lot to you. Like, yeah, I knew it. Like, no, you know, I didn't know was it gonna be like one of them things. Cause a lot of times, a lot of my stuff, like, it'll grow sw- slowly. Cause I put my time into it, and right. you know, so people will realize like, oh, this is dope. So I thought it was gonna be one of those usual things to where like it does cool, it does good that first week, and then it just grows over uh-huh. time. But uh-huh. yeah, that's that's it's a blessing. Definitely caught me off guard. I definitely think that promo had a lot to do with it and that's why i feel like it is yeah Yeah. what made you go with um you know all of those characters and morgan freeman as the narrator like how did that come about um i always done did my albums i always done like worked on them to the last minute like come out friday i'm working on it wednesday i done always did that so it had never really left me room to think and like roll something out you know, or I'll usually be like, wipe my Instagram and be like, yo, I'm dropping next Friday. Mm-hmm. Or do something like that, you know what I'm saying? But that don't really, it's not that engaging. It don't really leave no time to 
So just going over it with uh, my management, we were just talking about it. I was like, man, I want this to be the first time. Like, I'm going to listen to y'all. I want this to be the first time to where I turn the album in a month early I um so we could press the CDs up on time for the first week. I had so that last month it just left me with nothing to really do on the music side. So I'm just calling, harassing the marketing department at my label every single day, like on group text and told them like, yo, every day we gotta get on the phone. Uh -huh. Just every day we have to get on the phone and just and that's how the ideas and everything just came and just rolled it out smooth and it was a blessing how it all worked out. And and obviously you had had that idea for some time because, you know, Thug and Gunna were involved in the campaign so you know right and, and that we shot that i worked on this album like almost two and a half years like two years of change wow Damn. and that thing that short film with morgan and lakeith we had shot that um over a year ago like almost a year and a half ago type thing so it's like i've been working on all this for a while but you know i guess the time it just all came together in the end crazy Definitely. I would love to take it back because I'm in college myself. I know you went to Morehouse. Yes, sir. And when you first started off, you was producing and you were sending beats out. Um, and being in school and putting out music and producing and how how was that being on campus? You in the studio with Future, Gucci. How were you able to like. I know you was lit on campus, obviously, but how were you? How was how was how was that time you were splitting up? Okay, boomers. I know going to Morehouse, you really got to be on, yeah, on top of it. Yeah, you know they expecting a lot out of you at Morehouse, mm -hmm. and um, that's why I ended up uh, dropping out because it was just <laughs> <laughs> it was just like I thought. Just going into it, I was like, okay, you know, just young mm -hmm. and just thinking like, okay, I could do both of these. Yeah. But it'd be like i will be at the studio with Future or Patchwork with Gucci mm -hmm. every night, and it'll be like till 3 a.m. Then I got to get up at like 6 for class, 6.30. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you can only do that for so long if I really had to sit myself down and realize, like, look, the music is more where your heart's at, so you're really about to be just slacking in the school thing, wasting mm -hmm. time, wasting money. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like... Could you see some of your work ethic with the music stuff helping you with your, you know, producing career? Or do you say, like, you know, everything you was doing musically was just, like, over, I wouldn't say overbearing, but you really took it that route with it? Um, I just feel like my heart wasn't in the school mm -hmm. and it was, like, in the way type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it was just, like, just had to pray, talk to God, talk to my mom, and really just, like, just bet on me and just believe in like and just knowing like this is really what I, what I want to do and if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna really get this everything. Mm -hmm. Were you lit on campus? Like did did, did <laughs> um, the school did know? Google know? Yeah, Not how y'all would like, think. I mean, some people did. It wasn't like how you would think because uh -huh. really like okay, my first <clears throat> when school started like August. I think mm -hmm. in August. And Karate Chop was like the big, big thing. Right. And you said right. Hard was out too. So Hard came out yeah. right when I had started college. So I be walking around on campus, I hear how the people call sometimes the hard will play and I'll just be like, oh shit, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, then Karate Chop came out like a month, a month and a half later. Mm -hmm. So then, but it wasn't like everybody just knew or like, Off oh, you could just see my face be like, yo, he made a Karate Chop beat, like, you yeah. know? But you know, people would talk, some people would know and find out, but. um, What was your major? Uh, I was gonna be like business, like management. Mm -hmm. like, I wanted to know how to, uh, my thing was okay. If I'm be here, I want to know how to apply it smart back to the mm -hmm. music and be yeah. able to look after everything. And like, Definitely, that's what I tell people in the entertainment business all the time. Like I was a mass comm major, but I should have been a business major. Like marketing was my favorite class. Yeah, because I was applying it to everything I was doing mm -hmm. and my mixtape hustle and shit like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I'm gonna sit here, bro, I might as well like yeah. get some for uh, the music. But I ain't even get to that point in the school, but <laughs> I'm gonna go back so, one day. So we're recording at uh, Legendary Main Street Studios. Legendary. Um, Metro is here. You've been throughout this building and been a part of the legacy and the history of this building. I, I just was sitting here thinking, I, there's some pictures of us with Vert in this room. Y'all did, uh, you was right in the B room Man, over there. We did there. a lot of shit in there. I, I'm just curious, do you have any fondest or any, like some memories of of your time working in this building? 
We even built the room specifically for Metro here in, <laughs> in Main Street. Man, yeah, and we finished Savage Mode 1 in that room. And so I, I appreciate y'all for that. Yeah. I appreciate y'all for that. Man, so many great memories here. Uh, just being young and uh, Free Thug, when me and Thug was doing our thing, like coming One up time. and coming up here. And uh, I remember you had Meek in here. And yeah. this is uh, like in the beginning of me, like me, Meek, and Thug too. You know what I'm saying? So like, I mean, we was in here and uh, did some songs with him and just the vibe and just all the fun that it was, mm -hmm. like that's forever gonna stay with me. Um, finishing Savage Mode in here and uh, a lot of times with a lot of our songs sometimes, like with him, he'll just rap on the beat and I'll arrange it later. Mm -hmm. So he had the no heart thing and I had pulled the session up. And I remember the vibe, we just sitting in there and uh, just started moving the parts around and the song started to feel crazy and we looked at each other. That was in that was in the room that y'all had built. This room. In the, the C room, room the room that you room. said that y'all yep. had built for me was a blessing. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, before everything was even built out, when I first built this room, the B room, which was is like the the Love is Rage room, the yeah. Playboy Cardi room, the Gunner room, when I I have, we had this radio room right here, and I built that room. And TC, remember we had the little the little lounge right there. We had the little lounge in there, and I was in the and I was in the studio room, and I was like, damn, I got this pretty ass studio, and like nobody's coming to work here. <laughs> so I literally called Metro one day, and I was just like, yo, bro, look, I just built the studio, like I just trying to like you know what I'm saying I, you can have free studio time do whatever you want to do like I just want to let you check out the building see if you fuck with it yeah. and, and like the vibes Metro came and this was right around the time I hadn't met Thug yet and and Thug was you know starting to bubble in in the city of Atlanta and Metro had a session and Thug came over and that was how me and Thug first got introduced and Thug said this, wow. this your studio I, I like it. <laughs> and then that's when thug he stayed and never left so literally part of the mean streets legacy even before vert even before we signed vert yeah i forgot slime used to be locked in over here yeah too, like you yeah. really you really started the the wave of what mean street became because i allowed you to come in here and work and then it was up and on from there man, that's a blessing man i appreciate that just <laughs> even being a part of a legacy and just that it's history bro um, GQ called you the architect of Atlanta rap. Is that a title that you accept? Do you feel like it's fitting? Um, because after all those classic memories, drums just ran through it. Sounds that's just pretty, one building, right? Sounds yeah, pretty like, fitting to yeah. me. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't reject the title, or I wouldn't put it on myself. But like, um, I just love to make music. So architect, just for, just for music just of music um but Atlanta has definitely been vital and a huge I mean of course everybody know like a huge like part and centerpiece of everything I have going on and ever had going on so um I feel like one hand washes the other like I feel like the city has done so much for me and to support me and my career and just me growing into a man and uh I feel like one hand just washed the other with it. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. With your cook-up sessions, because um, I've subscribed to you on YouTube and I've I've, I've seen them progress. Yeah. The recent one you put out with Rocky, I'm like, yeah. and my girl like, man, turn that in. I'm like, bro, now I got to watch this. Like, so yeah. <laughs> with those sessions, it, I just saw you break down the beat. So for the people who are listening, what's the average studio session like for Metro? Because I know, you know, y'all were talking earlier about how early and soon you go in and try yeah. to measure that. But I saw, you know, Rocky coming in and freestyling over it. And then, you know, he telling you to add a little spice to it or you, you know, switching it up or like slowing it down. So yeah. on average, because I know that was just one scene of how long it took. You know, you said two years for making the album. What, yeah. what, what's, what was like the average, like, you know, or how were you even picking some of the samples that you use for the album? Because they were classics. Like my mom knew them. When I yeah, like, like that Peebo here, yeah. yeah. right? yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like uh, over the years, as I've grown, like from a beat maker into like a full-on producer, I feel like 
when I go to studios, especially working on the albums, I feel like at different times there's different hats I, mm. I need to have on. Like that was early in the album where I was just like making beats and uh, recording stuff. So days like that, I just go to the studio and make beats. And as far as picking the samples, uh, let's go to different record stores. I remember that Field of Fire, that sample you're talking about, mm -hmm. the one with uh, Rocky and Tate, Long Little mm -hmm. Tate. I had, um, I went to a record store out here, uh, that one on Far Road. I went to a record store and just had pulled up to the studio, started just going through the records. Just listen to them, vibe, sit, might hear certain parts. Mm -hmm. So it's days like that, just making beats or just make beats off the keyboard or whatever. Or um, other days, might be just going through songs or pulling up songs, editing songs, uh, fucking with vocals uh, with my engineer, Ethan. Shout out, Ethan. Mixing vocals, just messing with stuff. Like a lot of editing, bro. Like mm -hmm. editing stuff. And uh, other days will just be. Recording with niggas, just trying mm -hmm. shit, mm -hmm. um, going back and forth, bouncing ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, so it be different on different days, but I love mm -hmm. to just, uh, I love making beats. I'm always love making beats. Like yeah. sometimes Ethan will get frustrated with me because he'll be like, "We'll really have shit to do and deadline and shit," and yeah. I'll just be in there making beats. Yeah, and be like bro, we gotta we gotta go in on these songs, yeah. bro. And I'll be like, bro, I just just feel it, like bro, I just make some beats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People don't understand how important the chemistry or relationship is with like a producer and artist and like his engineer. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's like it's like a tight bond. Like yeah, that's my, man for life, and that's why like on the back of the CD they put I put executive produced by <laughs> me and him, Ethan <laughs> Stevens, because like he's like that's my partner, yeah. bro, and and I be making sure to like just speak out on that because that's really we done worked together for so many years now. It's like he could. It's like our brains are like kind of connected. Like he knows what I like or don't like. Or we might just be listening to some, then he might say something like, "Man, you think that kick is too low?" Mm -hmm. And it's always like, "Bro, I was gonna say." It's always like we thinking about it at the same moment. So like, you know, we had to work a lot of years uh, to get to that point. But yeah, he's great, man. Like every artist I put him in front of, like they all try to steal him, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question: Is it ever a struggle? When you have a fire ass song with an artist, when you're like, "No, I need this for my album," and they're like, "Come on, Tro, like I need that. I need <laughs> that for mine." Well, really, with me, I made a miss situations like that, of course. But like, with me, like even when I started with with my first solo album with the Not All Heroes Wear Capes, I told myself like, "Okay, you know, I always did collab projects, but now that yeah. you're stepping into the solo thing, like." I always remember like you're a producer first. So as a producer first, like, I'm here to serve. Uh, you know, I'm here to serve people uh, with great music. And I'm here to serve the artists with executing their vision, what uh, they're trying to do. So if somebody ever wants a song or wants whatever, like I'm not pressed about it. Gotcha. You, should, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now it's different. Certain songs I make, it might be tailor made specific for the album. Right. And it's like, bro, you understand why you can't. Right, right, right. right. But if it's just a <laughs> song, it's like, yo, I'm thinking about go for it. Cause right. guess what? I don't need niggas going in the studio or ever feeling like, oh, here come Metro, he finna want every song. Right. Like, <laughs> like, I'm not even on that. Like, I'm more than confident in the fact, like, I could make another hard song. Like, I'm not worried about that at all. So it's like, if it work out on your album, that might be even better. Like, okay, now we got some work over here. Like, that's cool. You know, we'll figure something else out. It's interesting that you say you're a producer first because I noticed something cool. I was on Instagram, I think, making a reel or something, and I was like, oh, you know what? I want to put Creepin' on here. And so I searched it up, and all of your instrumentals came up for every song on the album. Mm -hmm. And I have not seen that mm -hmm. at all for any other album. Mm -hmm. So was that on purpose or shout out to your marketing team? or? <laughs> Man, that was an idea I had even from the first Heroes. Um, mm -hmm. And this one, everybody was going deluxe crazy. And I done said some shit online about the deluxe shit mm -hmm. before. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, when it started to be like a finesse, I kind of like, I don't want to say frowned upon, but just looked at it kind of sideways at a certain point. You know, it was cool. A lot of niggas, some niggas was doing it at first, but then it just got to be like. A numbers game. And a like, numbers game. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, y'all just dropping a whole nother. You might well just drop a different project. Mm -hmm. fuck like, with how you got a, a deluxe with 13 mm -hmm. new songs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it, it just got to the point where it's like, think, like, I'm a producer. So like. I'm not gonna give y'all no more songs, but I can give y'all the beats because, yeah. like, I'm not a vocal 
artist so like this is really what i'm doing you know what i'm saying so um and i remember 2001 drake that's one of my favorite albums of all the time he had the instrumental only version of his album mm, so i was like yep. so that's really where i picked it up from mm. so i was like man every time i do an album like at least my solo ones i like, gotta put the beats out with mm. it yeah speaking of Dre, i was going to ask you what what are your top five damn bro, producer do that, bro. <laughs> got like non mc albums Oh, albums. Okay, okay. Yeah. We can't do that, John. I can do some of mine. <laughs> I can do some of mine. All right, all right. Um, so, Chronic 2001. Damn. Chronic. For sure. I'm going to go Pete Rock, Soul Survivor. Um, let me think. Who am I not thinking about? I'm... I'm not. I'm not gonna include you because you here. No, 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 no. It's it's too fresh. You gotta give me the the list list. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Clue the professional just because of what it means to me as a DJ. Right. And then um. I'm gonna go Funk Flex first album. And then what am I not thinking about? I might go a little old school. Maybe like Marley Mall. Molly Mall's first album. Okay. Oh, let me see. What'd you say? No, not, that that was the one with Big Cap. The first one was like 60 Minutes of Funk. Yeah. I'm not going to include any of mine. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. were you going to nah, talk I'm about a, yours? Nah, I'm going to definitely gonna include one of yours. Okay. <laughs> I for sure got, I got Gangsta Grills, that album in there. I got... um. I remember when I was young and that came out. I had that shit on repeat. <laughs> um, Khaled's first album, the We the Best. The We the Best album. I got, uh, of course, 2001 and The Chronic just yeah. automatically, them at the top automatically. Uh, fuck, I just had another one. Oh, when I was young, it was like seventh grade. I told him this on the phone last week. The Swiss Beats, One Man, Band Man. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. a good one. When I was in seventh grade, yeah, that was a good. One. I had that shit front, and it wasn't long, like it was short. Like I had that front to back on repeat, like that shit got me through. I could definitely remember that. Um, <sighs> damn, leave it at that right now. That's, that's probably like that's five fair. anyway. That's fair. That's a good one. For Khaled, I think I'm gonna go with the. Which is the one that we, Khaled? I'm gonna go. We the best, the, or, or the one, one that with, had go hard on it. I like the one that had um, the keys on it. Oh, or the one that's the one with Wild Thoughts. That was probably my favorite one. Nah, that was hard too. Yeah, I'll say we the best or we global. One of them for Cali is the top. And, and, and speaking of that too, what would you? What would? What would be your ideal verses to see? What verses has has it happened that you would want to see? A verses that just out of anybody. Anybody. That hasn't happened. That I'd like to see. Damn. Hmm. Damn, you hit me with shit I ain't thinking about coming in. I try to I try to have like service shit ready, but then you down the curveball. I'll say hmm. I wanna say Dre and somebody, but I'm trying to think who he'll go against. Gotta be Puff. Yeah, it would have to be like Dre yeah. and Puff. It would have to be. I I definitely tune in for that. Yeah. Um. I think they're setting up the Diddy versus Jermaine one. Somehow, <laughs> some way. So. Who you got winning though? Between Dre and Puff. Mm -hmm. Dre. The culture. Yeah, that's got, a good answer. I got the culture winning. <laughs> <laughs> I like fun. to I like to watch Diddy and Jermaine too. Yeah, that'd like, be fire. You know, I know Diddy be feeling like Jermaine can't <clears throat> fuck with him, yeah. but niggas Jermaine can't. Yeah, Jermaine yeah. got his <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> Yeah. I seen Joe. I seen Joe Budden talk about it the other day, and he said they would have to do two. One would have to be a hip hop versus, and, and one would have would to be, be an R and B versus. Yeah, that would be I like good. that. Yeah, I like that. And he said Puff would probably win the hip hop one, um, and the R and B one would be. Yeah, I could tough. see that. I could yeah. for sure see. Yeah, Puff got an R and B shit too. Yeah, but Jermaine. Yeah, no, nah, he's a he's a killer. Then he got Crazy. the pin side too. So killer, it's like, yeah, nigga, niggas, I could, niggas I could sleep on Bring out all niggas. the songs I wrote and all the songs I produced on mm -hmm. both. Like, who would Metro do a versus with? Oh man, I ain't at that place in life yet. 
Cause I feel like I I, I love what they doing with the versus culture. Like so shout out Tim, shout out Swiss, OGs. But I just feel like it's more of a um, OG thing. Yeah, or like a um, how I put this. I feel like that's like a later on thing. Yeah. Like when you're not done, but like you well out of your prime. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's when it's more like appreciative and a celebration. Like nostalgic. Yeah, nostalgic. Yeah. Like it ain't been enough time to even like to uh to celebrate a lot of shit that I done did so far. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I feel like I'm about to enter my prime type mm-hmm. thing. So like doing mm-hmm. the verses, I just feel like it'll be premature. Like they reached out a couple of times for mm-hmm. a couple of them versus a couple of people, mm-hmm. but it's like I just felt like. So you turned some down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Who they, ha- who, who they have you going against? <laughs> 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 Damn. <laughs> Only because it's you, bro. Um, they they called me a couple times about doing verses with Mike Will. I feel, that's what I was yeah, gonna say. Of course, you knew that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Mike Will, my yeah, brother, man. Yeah, but it's just like. I feel like me and him, like it's just kind of yeah. like y'all, y'all really got y'all, y'all y'all good decade in, but this yeah. next decade is is gonna be amazing. Mm-hmm. So like I know what yeah. you're saying, like you know, if we were to take Dre a decade in, like this is well, yeah. we wouldn't this is before we wouldn't have M yet. We wouldn't shit. We wouldn't we, have none of that. We wouldn't even have, mm-hmm. we barely had Snoop. So barely had Snoop. You wouldn't have me? Mary and all that. Yeah, shit. Yeah, we wouldn't have got to like Kendrick, like, N.W.A. Yeah. And like, Definitely. Um, speaking of that too, what what's it been like for you to watch uh, Savage's trajectory and like you know where he is in hip hop, coming from the freshman class of 2016, who you know a certain uh, facet of hip hop almost frowned upon the class, who was no, Savage sure. Vert. Yachty, Kodak, very frowned and, upon. and then Let's now we, real. now we get <laughs> yeah, very class. frowned upon. Yeah. Now, now we see where you know where that class is now, and like you know, what's it what's it like for you to see where him and you know the the, the other guys that you you worked with through your career, and you know their place in hip hop and the respect that and the accolades that they've now gotten. It's just a, a blessing to see these young black men just grow mm-hmm. and just like blossom. You know what I'm saying? How could you not love that? And um, as far as Savage, uh, just his trajectory and just the fact that he's still, like, going up, like, it's a blessing even to, like, really see and know, like, where he come from and, like, where he was at when we got together. And just him as a man, like, even beyond music, like, I mean, he's he sharpens his rapping up more every time, every year, too. Like, and I be seeing, like, his, his hunger to just – become better and more respected as like an actual rapper. You know what I'm saying? And like separate from like, trying to throw a nigga like in the mumble rap Mm -hmm, type thing, mm -hmm. even though he don't even mumble, Mm -hmm. you feel me? So um, it's that and even just like who he's grown into like as a, just as a human bro, Mm -hmm. just as a man. He always been solid even back then, but it's just like, we all older now. Like, you know, he just turned 30, I just turned 29. Like, it's like we, we different people then then you know what i'm saying like even everything you go through in life i feel like we all just then grew I've, and- I've always said this i always see savage is like going at some point in his career like the snoop ti lane like TV show like Hell I yeah. can see him All doing that. a cooking show with Martha Stewart. <laughs> that nigga funny, like, bro. You know what I'm That's saying? What I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah for he, sure. he's 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 going mainstream yeah. for sure. Mainstream, <laughs> exactly. So that's why like it's amazing to see like coming in just how you were and just like just like slowly but surely just growing into like who he is now and like where he's going. Like it's it's really amazing, bro. Just even watching it, like witnessing it. How do you feel about um, his dual album with Drake, the Drake link up? It's hard, for sure. And Knife Talk, obviously. That was supposed to be on your album? Nah, Knife Talk was on... Or his album. It was on Drake's album. It was on the CLB. We was going... We had did it for uh, Savage Mode 2. And uh, I had it. it I always had it as the intro. But then... um, we had made running. He was like, man, I want running to be an intro. I was like, all right, that's hard. So after that, because it had Pat versus Long, it was like a cinematic, drawn-out intro. So mm-hmm. it was like, 
as I'm sequencing the album at that point, I'm like, it wasn't that the song went hard enough to make it, but it was like, I don't know why I could place it right here where it's gonna get it's just due. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just held it for like the next project we did, like, okay, it's gonna be the first song. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess he ended up playing Drake the song and we ended up going on his album. I feel like it was a perfect introduction um, being on CLB to like their duo. Album yeah, it later worked out on. for that. And I feel yeah. like that was one of the seeds that really mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. sparked to, to grow into that. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, what happened with the trance record? Because Drake, obviously, that his version, his verse leaked um, this week. Why did he, why did that version not make the album? Um, really, it was a song I had did with Travis and Thug originally for my album. And um, I was just in the studio with Drake one time because we were going to do some stuff for my album. And he just wanted to hear some songs from my album. Then he heard that one and really wanted to get on it. But like I was letting him know that he was really just done for real. And I was really mm-hmm. just set on how it was. I was like, Brian, I didn't try to sell you no dream. Like mm-hmm. It's really like just locked in i'm locked in where it was but he had hit me and was just like man uh let me see if it's just anything he could add to it and he was like if you don't like it then whatever so he did he did some stuff a couple parts was cool but like i just felt like just even with like slime verse and trav verse and the outro it was just already like it just really wasn't no room it was just wasn't no room it wasn't personal it just wasn't no room so i had uh I just ended up using the original, and I guess the other one just leaked or something. Yeah. Do y'all think there's ever been anyone who's told Drake, I think the song is done? <laughs> I, not history, that I know. In the history of music? <laughs> Probably not. If I had to bet money on it, I it would say no. It had to be somebody no. else. Right? <laughs> Come on, don't, don't make me the first bet. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the soldier yes, boy man. might be the first, baby. you're the second. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, like, who do you feel like challenged you creatively the most on the album? Because you got, I mean, from, you know, Trance with even, you know, like, the Around Me record with Don Tolliver. Like, That's my shit. I pulled up playing that. It's so <laughs> many different, it, the songs on the album put me in so pockets. many different moods. And it's like, I could put it on shuffle and I could listen to it in the morning mm. and at night and in the middle of the day. Because it's not just that. Uh, kill him, shoot him, bang, bang. It's like, oh yeah, this like I could work out to this. Survive. I can brush my mm-hmm. teeth to this. Like, yeah. But with that, you know, you got the weekend, Dante, Slime, like breezy. who do you right, breezy? Mm-hmm. Who who do you think challenged you the most creatively? I feel like all of them collectively because they all have different voices, different tones, and I look at albums like a puzzle that has to be cohesive to make one picture instead of like a bunch of different little. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. How you take all these characters, all these voices, all these textures, and put it all together to make sense, mm. you know? And um, I just wanted it to be a vibe, bro. Like, you know, uh, we young, we kick it with women, we have a good time. Like, so, like, a lot of that inspired a lot of the album. Like, you know, I, I feel like even we in a place where it's a lot of the shit you was just talking about, mm-hmm. like, the shoot them up, this, 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 that. Like, okay, that's cool, but it's just like, just want to feel it. good, yeah. just have mm-hmm. a good time. Mm-hmm. But like, I wanted to have different pockets, but I didn't want it to be like, I was like reaching like, okay, I got this type of record and then this type of, mm-hmm. I just wanted to like, just my own take on different things, but like through my filter and right. not trying to do it like, the around me, not trying to do it like a traditional, like a pop song or something, but just right. do it like, your spin to it, yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So exactly. it kind of tied all together. Sure. I feel like you and Future have made a lot of those feel good records together, like over the years. Yeah, and then it seemed sure. like y'all kind of went your separate ways for a little while. So, what brought that super duo back together? Man, it's crazy because I know, like, out of public perception, it always looked like we went our separate ways, but neither one of us really went nowhere. Like, um, just looking for the right moment. After we already didn't put no songs out together for a long time, it was just about the right moment. I feel like God just brought this moment together. Like, uh, Superhero is our first song we done had since Mask Off. And that came out, like, 2017. Mm-hmm. So, but since Mask Off came out, I know me and him for sure have recorded at least two, 300 songs together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
but it's just about we know like what we done built like just with our legacy together and it was just like the right moment to you know because after time go by you know everybody going they can't wait to be like they start missing it yeah yeah oh, and miss it. it but they can't wait to be like they oh that shit ain't like yeah. oh, they, they can't wait to do that too but they yeah. also can't wait to be like oh that shit ain't hard like, like how like it was no, yeah. true. you know what i'm saying yeah, like so it's like you gotta set it up to like enter back into it the right way like even on um i never liked you the uh mm -hmm. his album he just yep. dropped he finished half of it at my studio in la i was in another room every day but mm -hmm. it's like and i had a couple songs that we was gonna put on there but we had took them off at the last minute i pulled them to the side and it was just like bro it's been like five years like you know what i'm saying we mm -hmm. gotta these songs it was it was some cool songs they was hard but i was like man me and you coming back for the first time it's mm -hmm. like because we already knew we was gonna have superhero and the stuff on my album coming out like some months later yeah. it was supposed to come out like right after his album at first so he was like we need to just wait for that moment and just have it roll out the right way and he had agreed so now it's back on you know me and him we got we got a lot of shit coming for sure mm -hmm. do you do you have a favorite metro tag and like what was it like when it went viral uh when if young metro don't trust you i'm gonna shoot you yeah, that was that was crazy. Huh. Um, for I, I'll answer the first one. Favorite tag. It's hard to say. Cause you got some legendary ones. It's a lot of them. Um, I feel like the once some more tag had really like it like started a spark. Just as that, but it wasn't like nothing I had did and thought of like, oh, this gonna blow up. Uh -huh. It was just cool, like. <laughs> We had did the song, and my engineer at the time, shout out Alex Tume, he had, without me even asking, he had cut it uh -huh. and put like three different versions of it in the folder. I was like, man, you should start putting these on your beats. So I did, and people started to fuck with it. I was like, damn. And then it just sounded hard, like it just went with the song. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in the studio with Pluto one day, we're doing a song with Uncle Murder, and he said, hey, you know, Mitch, hold on. So I was like, damn, that, that was another one. <laughs> and uh, actually, the, the one, the take, he had did two takes. I be listening to the tones and shit, like I'm obsessed with that. So he had did one take, the original take, the first take was the one, the tag that's out that everybody hear. Mm -hmm. But the take that went on the song wasn't even the one I used as the tag. Mm -hmm. So I went to the engineer. That like, was a more get... hyper one. Yeah, he was yep. like, hey, you know, man, mm -hmm. it was like a higher one. Mm -hmm. So I know I remember I hit, hit uh, engineer, I was like, yo, I need that first one. You know what I'm saying? So then that had everything with the Kanye stuff had took that to uh another level mm -hmm. by my surprise um it's a lot on bro but i feel like right now i don't know just the metro mm -hmm. i like that one a lot slime. it's just yeah slime is just it's short it's sweet it's like you know mm -hmm. how has um uh slime situation affected you man greatly um i be talking to him Oh, how's he doing? First, man, he's blessed, man. Anybody know Slime? Like he's strong. Like he got a heart of gold, but he got the heart of a warrior mm -hmm. at the same time. So like, he got his head up, you know. I and I pray for him every single day, even since everything first happened. I pray for him every single day, him and his family. And by my faith, like I'm confident that he's gonna be all right. Um, even like when the day he got locked up, he was. He was supposed to be in the superhero video mm. with Pluto because mm. they had the tag. So shout to Haji. He had a whole like scene and like set up to where he was gonna say the tag and do mm. some other shit. And like we had a trailer for him and everything, bro. Wow. And I remember talking to him like on the FaceTime. Wow. And he was like, uh, he was like, shit, I'm finna pull up. So we waiting on him. You know, everybody waiting. So you know, like the producers and everybody they nudging me like, yo, try to call him again. Ooh, ooh. Then I called him again. This time he had like his shades on, his clothes on, like he was ready, like he was really finna leave. <laughs> and then about, so I was like, all right, he finna be here. Then about 45 minutes later, bro, niggas running up. I'm like, bro, you see what happened with Slime? I'm like, man, what you mean? So like, man, it's my brother. I love him to death. I, you know, um, yeah, man, he, he, and, and he done helped me a lot with a lot of stuff that I've been going through this past year, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's just a genuine soul, bro. That's how I know he'll be all right. Amen. What's, um, what's Metro's kryptonite? 
Damn. Hmm. Cause the hero thing, right? Like kryptonite. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so like a weakness. Hmm. Damn. Keep it PG. <laughs> you gotta keep you it don't PG. have we to don't keep it PG. <laughs> yeah. We want the real <laughs> answer. Yeah. Um, Took his shit glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Uh. Mine's is women, so. We I, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might could go on the list. That might could go on the list. But, uh, um,. Some say this weakness as far as what, like weak to. Um, so kryptonite, for anybody that don't know, is Superman's. Um, it was takes away his superpowers. Yeah, it's from his original planet. Yeah. So when he came to Earth, once the kryptonite got anywhere near him, it would take away his powers and make mm. him normal. So, yeah. So what takes away your superpowers and all your strengths? Mm. Makes all your common sense go out the window. Because in this way, a week that could it be like my kids? Mm -hmm. That's why I started thinking about could stuff be. like that. Like, oh, yeah. um, I say anytime if I drift off and drift off from like close communication and and awareness of God and His presence, mm. Mm. I say like any time in my life where. I start drifting too, then shit get shit be getting crazy. Shit be, I might feel weak or, or less strong or like, you know. But anytime like I stay in like close connection and communication with God, I feel like that'd be like my superpower. Cause then no matter how bad stuff get, like I don't be stressing it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's probably the top thing. But um. Yeah, women make me weak sometimes. <laughs> you know, for sure. Um, is there a collaborative project that you're either working on or that you want to work on or have plans of working on? Mm. Outside of the ones that we're already aware of. Which ones y'all aware of? Well, I mean, we would assume a savage. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. You know, that's always going to keep yeah. going. Um, so yeah, we're not aware of any other ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, me and Pluto might be dropping something. I we'll talked to him yesterday. Okay. Um. Okay, let's say outside of the ordinary place. Okay. Okay. <laughs> See, you draw him smart. <laughs> like, nah, nigga, that ain't enough. <laughs> Me and Don might be doing some hard. We might hard. be doing some. Is there one you can't tell us, but that's happening? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> for certain. Yeah. This year, for sh for sure, for sure. Can we, can you give us like a hint, like just like a a broad? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna just say when this drop. I'm gonna just say honestly, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> It'll be like one of the biggest things out this generation for wow. sure. Mm. And I don't even like to, you know, I'd be chilling. I don't yeah. like to just jump out and say, but I could confidently say that. And it's this year we're we're getting it this year. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So whenever it happens, what do y'all think? Look back to this and be. Are like, we get? Can we guess? I mean, yeah. He, I I mean, like he's not gonna. Not? I don't want him to answer, but you, you can. Po hey, how good is your poker face? Is if we get? <laughs> we're gonna be like, bro. God damn. Oh, yeah, we're not gonna let the it, people know. Yeah, look, put, put your glasses back on. Is it a rap album? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, feel like I it's was just not. about to go genre ass I with feel genre. Like it's not. Yeah, no, male or female? I don't think it's a rap. I don't think it's rap. I don't think it's rap either. Yeah, but I, I think don't know, it's a though. female non-rap album. I agree with that's Sarah. my guess. That still leaves a lot open. Because mm -hmm. we could go young female. Is it Rihanna? That's exactly who I was about to say. Your poker face sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Might be playing poker with you. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> well, reason what, being is we've all been of. waiting. 
on a Rihanna, Rihanna album yeah. forever. Yeah. So I could see that being something to fuck this whole generation Seriously. up. You know, you got to reach. Yeah, based off the statement, that's definitely a, a, yeah. a good, like, good guess. Good guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, can you talk about your history with Canon? Man, shout out Canon, man. Um, always, man, my brother, I feel like Canon, Canon's been like a mentor, big brother figure to me since I was like 15, bro. Still lived in Atlanta. Uh, I mean, not Atlanta, St. Louis. And um, he was the first person that, that wanted to sign me back when I was like in 10th grade. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10th grade. I'm 29 now. So like, it was a long time ago. Um. And he just always kept this shit real, bro. Like, uh, he knew my mama well. Uh, she trusted him, you know, cause I'm her baby. So it's like, it gotta be like, you know, but she trusted him. And uh, we was always supposed to do a contract with me signing up under him, Canon mm-hmm. Music. I remember I was so excited for it. I was like, <laughs> I tell my friends at school, like, nigga, I'm to be signed, like, you know? <laughs> and, um. I remember it took the paperwork, everything was so drawn out. And I remember it got to the point to where, like, I would be hitting him up. You know, normally it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, when we going to finish the deal? Like, yeah. nigga, I'm ready to uh, sign it all the way. So he had just, he kept it real, bro. He told me some shit I'll never forget. He was just like, man, instead of me just, kept, by then we had just formed such a bond. He was like, I don't even want to really sign you and just do that to you. Not saying a nigga try to do me wrong, mm-hmm. but just like put any kind of like restraints or ch- anything on you. But he was like, I'm always still gonna be here and just to do whatever and help you with whatever all the same. And he kept his word, he really has always been there and helped with shit even back then, like helping with shit even though he wasn't getting paid on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just keeping it real. And man, I always remember that. Cause at the time I was just like, I wasn't crushed, but I was just like a little let down. I was like, damn, I thought I was finna. But just some years later, like I seen, I was like, man, he really kept that shit solid because mm-hmm. he could have easily been like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, nigga, come yeah. on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I'm sure he regrets it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. But, uh, he probably ain't see all that coming. So, like, he I'm sure like, he would have moved a little faster with his paperwork. <laughs> he probably like, damn. But, <laughs> but yeah, man, that's why Cannon, like, I'm always, you know, here for him. I'm always here for you, Drum. I'm always here for, man, like, y'all done always, even before everybody else saw it, y'all mm-hmm. always, you know what I'm saying, was there and seen it, like. Even the early interviews we did when I had an afro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just like, y'all done always been there, and I'm more than grateful for that, bro. Love, man. Love, we, always. We, we, the same back to you, man. You know, we're just gracious of of your soul and, you know, your presence and your greatness. Appreciate when do you think it, um, you're going to start working on part three? Man, so this is the thing. With this album, cause I don't like to put a lot of songs on one album. Mm-hmm. So Are we getting a deluxe? No, I put the instrumentals out. That was the hero's version. <laughs> then I got the villain's version finna drop. Um, which is fuck, I ain't told nobody else this because they keep asking what's the villain's one gonna be, but mm-hmm. it's gonna be a chopped and screw one. Shout out, Ron mm-hmm. C. You know, I grew up on that. Like, like mm-hmm. I said, a student of the game. So, like, I grew up. Love them screw tapes from like him, Michael Watts, like all that type Facts. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some albums I used to listen to screw growing up, like more than the original. original. I was right. just listening yeah. to them. So like, I'm dropping that. And um, as far as having the other one ready, we had so many songs that were great songs that we wanted to use for this one, but it was just about what fit the best. So mm. a lot of ones that we were gonna use th- for this one that were pretty much ready, we gonna use them for the third one. So I say. For the third one, we got a good head start. Like it's not all the way done, but we got a good head start. Um, as far as when I'm gonna put the third one out, I'm not sure. I really want to get this one sometime. Some time. Yeah, like I'm gonna do all the other side projects and collabs mm-hmm. and EP and other people's projects. But as far as like the heroes, universe thing and my solo shit, I really want to let this one like breathe mm-hmm. and. Keep putting out videos, shoot mostly all the videos, and just 
You know, cause I remember growing up, like, that's how they did. Mm-hmm. Took, yeah, a couple years between albums and things you like know, that. You know, like, I can't spend over two years on something and then move on from it after three months. Mm-hmm. Like, what the hell, we just put all this, For sure. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this shit got to keep going, so. The time span has fucked the game up. It has. Yeah. It has, because people feel pressure to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. Nah, I definitely want to just keep it going with this one, man. Mm-hmm. But still doing other shit, but to the third one, yeah. Um, Last question. Who is your favorite fictional superhero and your favorite fictional villain? Batman. Oh, and me and Batman got the same last name. So shout out to Batman. Hmm. But even from a kid, that was always my favorite, favorite superhero. Batman, favorite villain. That's a good one. I grew up watching Batman movies and cartoons, all that, so I'd probably say the Joker. Joker. I wasn't trying to just do the two <laughs> same, but that's probably what it is. Who's your favorite Joker? Mm. Hmm. Well, you got to say Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger, but growing up. Heath Ledger, but who just did it? Joaquin. Uh, he was pretty fire, too. But, yeah, no, I forgot about that. But yeah. I look at that like that's dip. He's up there. But yeah, I look yeah, at that Joaquin like that's was, different. They did that like a real life type movie, movie type. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what like, I'm saying? Like a real drama. Yeah. You know, and I fuck with that movie hard. I yeah, can't wait to see that. That movie's hard as fuck. Incredible. I'm about to watch that shit again. Now yeah, me too. I ain't <laughs> watched it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't watched it since it came movie, out. Yeah. Soon it came out, I bought it. Yeah. I bought this shit. Like, so Joaquin, gotta give it to him. I was just thinking about like with Batman. But um I'll say Heath Ledger, Joaquin, and yeah. Growing up, bro, I was watching Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, yeah, that was Joker. a big one. Me too. I had fuck with that. Niggas yeah. sleep on Bane, though. Bane is a L.A. Bane is Bane. hard as fuck. Yeah, yeah Bane was. I feel like they, they don't put Bane in enough in enough shit. Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey in, in the Batman. And Jim the Carrey's Riddler. a Riddler. That yeah, that Riddler was crazy. Was, yeah, Jim Carrey. As we talking about movies, Jim Carrey is the Riddler. That definitely. was one of my least favorite Batmans, really? though. Really? That was the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was him and Two Face. The Iceman, yeah, Ice yeah. Man. I got that, it. That was George Clooney. Which world is better, DC or Marvel? I say Marvel. Marvel. <laughs> yeah, Marvel. Definitely Marvel for sure. I just like Overall, Batman alone. Yeah, better. Out of yeah, DC. the Dark Knight. But Dark I don't really Knight like series. the rest of DC. I'm not a Superman fan. I really don't fuck with him at all. <laughs> you know, I, mean? I, I, I like the Suicide Squads though. Most people don't like them. I like the I Suicide, like Suicide Squad. Squad. Shit. I like it. What do they do for real? Like, I, the, it was last, the last movie was was entertaining. <laughs> I didn't the, see the last the, one. The last one. I remember the Not the one with Will Smith, but the one with I like the uh, second Andrews. one better than the first one Me with Will too. Smith. The first one was like cool, but the second one was like, I enjoyed that. I saw that in the theater. But um, Marvel, as far as like a thought out world, yeah, as far as the details, yeah. and it's it's unmatched. X Men or Avengers? Mm. It's only one right answer X Men. No. Yes. What? Avengers? X-Men. Nigga, the X. Can you forget he's 21. So. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> you got no. You're going this. off the movies. I'm going I'll off the. This. You okay. read the comics? You're just going off of. Of course I just, did. Uh, you're yeah. just going off of. Okay. Yeah. X Men, bro. The X Men crazy, bro. The, they're just iller, X-Men like Wolverine. But like I Professor feel like X. The Avengers, who's really walking I, Iron, around Iron here with like Iron Man to me is really the only fire. But the Avengers, they just have like better representation, like a. A new but like age. in the movies, in the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, in the movies, but like Cause Marvel didn't do the X Men. But I ain't gonna lie, growing up, like toy wise, I had oh, I had hella Wolverine toys. I ain't, yeah, re- I don't remember me nigga, having bro. no Iron Man toys or no. You a young nigga? I know. I definitely, oh, I definitely had Wolverine toys. Yeah, Wolverine. Was Wolverine. I'm talking about blue and yellow Wolverine, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> blue and yellow Wolverine. Come on, yeah, bro. That's Jean the old, Grey. That's the old yeah. X Men. Jean Grey. Come on. So say that was the face off, though. Say that was the face off, like who can't die. Yeah, Wolverine can't die. <laughs> the X-Men would fuck the Avengers up. The X-Men up. was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Now I'm thinking about them <laughs> niggas fighting. That shit probably get too crazy. Yeah. That's Deadpool they jumping there. Hey. X-Men versus Avengers. That would be great. It's coming? Yeah, because they had that card. They had that comic, too. X-Men. You gotta think. Who in, all right, who in the Avengers that face off with? Who you got? So, Iron Man. I fuck you, with these niggas. I'm not downplaying, but you, you got, got Spider-Man. Man. They fucking him up. Yeah. Off top. He's Hall, Captain yeah. America don't count, bro. I don't even got Thor, powers. Thor, Thor will fuck some violent, niggas up. Thor. Most violent superhero. Hulk. 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 Deadpool. 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 Deadpool's yeah, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Deadpool is the illest. 
Deadpool is just a killer. He's a he's just a murder machine. Isn't X isn't Deadpool an X Men? Deadpool is an X Men. And you gotta think the X Men. No Deadpool. Deadpool. You gotta think that the X Men would really kill shit. You know niggas like Batman and Avengers like they have a cold like they might subdue a nigga and knock him out. Yeah. X Men they killing niggas. They don't they don't care. Yeah. They don't they don't and had no remorse about it. You know what I'm saying? So like I see it. I I yeah the X Men. And I had seen some niggas put online, but it turned out to not be true. But I still like to look at it that <laughs> way. And they said that um, Magneto's like Malcolm X, and they said that uh, Dr. Xavier was like Dr. King. Huh. And then you go back. And I watch could see that yeah. though, because you know Marvel man? had a lot of like, lot of um, underlying tones Hell of yeah. civil rights and things. And I mean, mm-hmm. shit, they came up with Black Panther in the '60s, mm-hmm. like yeah. Wakanda. None of that shit is new. Like, yeah, exactly. that shit dates back 40 years through the comic books. Yeah, yeah exactly. So if you go back watch the X Men movies now and see, like, That's they cool. was really on the same side. Like, right. they was like on the pro mutant side, mm-hmm. just one of the best for mutants, but. Mm-hmm. One tried to be like political and mm-hmm. peaceful, and one was like, fuck that. Yeah, by any means necessary. Yeah, yeah, they ain't gonna disrespect mm-hmm. you. But they was really on the same side. That's so, hard. You know what I'm saying? So somebody had said, oh, it was just a rumor, but I still like to look at it like that because it is like, yeah. that's what it was. So I'm about to go look that shit up too. Metro, we appreciate you, heroes and villains. Man, I appreciate y'all. It's a blessing just to be here, man. God bless. I appreciate you so much. Um, We're gonna get into some music right now. Y'all know what it is 888 Shade 45 Metro! You dig?